Hello and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you've seen and if you want to see more. Coming up in this episode, the final two NRL games of round 22 are completed. And Cam Cerrado has announced his next move. Well, first we're going to look at Huddersfield Giants as there was three little bits of newsworthy snippets uh, coming from the club after the signing of Harry Rushton a couple, um, the day before. Those three players have been subject to some rumours about moving on, but Ian Watson made it clear why their futures lie for now. First of all, Mr. Versatility for Huddersfield this year, um, Ash Golding, who joined the club at uh, the John Smith Stadium back in 2020, has extended his contract for the next two years until the end of 2024. Ash Golding is an ace player, and not just on the field, but he had so much more around the team, and we've seen the impact he can have when he's on the field, said head coach Ian Watson. There was also further good news with regards to second rower Chris McQueen. As yes, this year's Lance Todd Trophy winner in the Challenge Cup final has extended his contract for one more year to stay with the Giants for a fourth season. In commenting about McQueen, though, uh, Watson said, as for Christmas. Queen. We've been talking about keeping him for a while, so to get it done is fantastic for everyone. Again, not just his ability on the field, but his winning mentality he brings is exactly what we want in the squad. Ian Watson also insisted that his prize asset Will's price will be staying at Huddersfield Giants for the 2023 season. Reports in Australia have linked the son of former Bradford Bulls and St. Helens star Leon Price with a move to Newcastle as early as next year. But Watson stressed today that the 19-year-old talent Price will definitely be part of the playing staff at the John Smith Stadium in 2023, saying that Will's not going anywhere. He's 100% at Huddersfield Giants next year. Watson continued, we're not interested in letting him go yet and I think the right thing for Will's development is that he's here for another 12 months. All the indications we've had when speaking to Will is that he's happy here. He's going to see out his contract and then we he will take a view on it next year. We're all happy with it and you can't stop the media talking. That's what happens. We can only control what we can control. Now with the news that these three players are retained for 2023, it should stand Huddersfield in good stead as they look to continue their project that Ian Watson has started over the last couple of years. This morning, this evening, in wherever you are in the world, there has been an announcement from Canterbury Bandstown Bulldogs. They have gone on to announce that Cameron and Al uh, Seraldo has joined the club as their new head coach for the next five years, starting in 2023. The in-demand Penrith Panthers assistant has been helped them mastermind the defending Premier's climate and dominance under Ivan Cleary. However, Seraldo has decided to take a step up into the head coach role at the Bulldogs after previously knocking back the West Tigers job. There was reports that interim coach Mick Potter was keen to stay on after taking over from sacked coach Trent Barrett earlier this season. However, Canterbury general manager of football Phil Gould wanted Seraldo, who has been in previous coaching roles at the Panthers since 2014 to fill their position. Seraldo's arrival at Belmore will keep star playmaker Matt Burton at the club, more than likely. Burton worked with Seraldo at the Panthers before linking up with the Bulldogs this season. The club's website heralded the decision and stated 
The Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs are pleased to announce that Cameron Seraldo has been appointed the, as the NRL head coach for five seasons, commencing in 2023. As the club continues for the long-term success, the sustained success, we are pleased Cameron shares the vision to ensure our football programs are best in class. With respect to Cameron and the Penrith Panthers, we will not make any further comments until the end of the season. A comment from the Panthers soon followed as well. Penrith Panthers assistant coach Cameron Seraldo will depart the club following the 2022 season. Seraldo will remain at the Panthers for the remainder of the season before taking up the NRL head coach position at the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. On behalf of all the Panthers, we would like to congratulate Cameron for his appointment as an NRL head coach, Penrith's Rugby League CEO Matt Cameron said. Although we're saddened to see Cameron depart the club at the end of the season, we're thrilled to see him progress to the next chapter of his NRL coaching career. A usually re a highly respected member of the coaching staff, Cameron has played his part in making our club a source for community pride and was influential in providing an environment for the players to thrive. We wish Cameron, his wife Kim and their children all the best in the next chapter of their lives, but we're excited for him to finish the season at the Panthers. Seraldo played for Penrith, Newcastle and Cronulla during his 94 match NRL career. He finished up with the Panthers in 2013 and joined the club's coaching staff the following season as the assistant coach in the under-20s programme. Seraldo later served as the Panthers under-20s co head coach before becoming an assistant at the NRL level. He was defence coach when the Panthers won the Premiership last year and he was tech caretaker coach in 2018 after the club parted ways with Anthony Griffin. Let's now turn our attention to the Sunday games. Uh, as round 22 is coming to a close, Canberra Raiders face St. George Illawarra Dragons in the opening game. The Raiders, though, play four sides below them on the ladder in the run to the finals and fancy their chances of returning to the playoffs after missing out last year. Currently on ninth in comp on 22 competition points, the Raiders meet the Dragons in 11th, Newcastle Knights in 13th, the Seagulls in 10th and West Tigers in 15th in their last four games and will need to at least win three games as well as a significant boost to their it for and against which sits on minus 33 in the points differential charts. The Dragons narrow, narrow loss to Cronulla make, leaves them two games outside the eight with a points differential of 130 minus of 130 meaning they will need four massive wins to have any hope of sneaking into the finals. When these sides last met it six weeks ago and it was the Dragons prevailed 12 points to 10 with a controversial finish at the Wynn Stadium. So who have the play teams named? Ricky Stewart who is away, um, banned for this game and also uh, and that's Anthony Griffin for the Dragons. Well, here we go. Well, for the Raiders, there's not much change into the lineups as they named what uh, the names take to the field as 1 to 17 with barnstorming Brock Josh, uh, Joseph Tarpany out with a rib injury, and Emil uh, Emir Gula taking his place in the starting front row. Corey Holzberg joins the interchange bench while Xavier Savage is back at fullback after missing round 21, one with an ankle injury. Albert Hapoate is on the wing for the suspended Nick Kotrick. For the Dragons, Cody Ramsey returns from a knee injury at fullback, which triggers a big reshuffle across the 17. Moses Vembai moves from fullback to centre, taking the place of Jack Bird, who now will start at lock. Michael Molo starts in uh, moves from the starting side to the bench. Eric Sims bam for a, a careless hey, I tackle sees Josh McQuire move into the starting side. And Terrell uh, Fuimano 
uh, joins the bench uh, for his first game since round 12. This turned out to be a game that was separated by just two points in the Raiders' favour. One conversion as the Raiders won 24 points to 22. Both teams scored four tries, but three conversions, two, four for the Raiders. Sees St. George come out with the loss. First of all, Hudson Young opened the scoring as early as the first minute with his with the opening try. Then it was Talatawa Mo Amone who got the ball rolling for the Dragons. He scored again 19 minute, uh, 13 minutes later on the 19th minute before Jordan Rapana replied for the dra uh, for the Raiders. Ryan Sutton appeared on the Raiders team and scored in the 35th minute to give an 18 points to 12 lead going into the halftime hooter. In the second half, it was a minute before of the first try of the second half as Albert Hapoate went over on the 41st. Amon got over on the 67th minute before Moga went over on the 75th minute, which was left for Zach Lomax to try and convert to tie up the game, but he wasn't able to. And then the final five minutes were played out for the Raiders to narrowly win over St. George. And for the final part of this episode, the final game of round 22, where Gold Coast Titans faced the Manly Sea Eagles. And it was a day that the Titans were looking to save face and climb off the bottom of the ladder when they host the Seagulls at the Seba Super Stadium. After making the finals in 2021, the Titans have had a huge fall from grace, winning just three games all season and scrambling to avoid a second wooden spoon in four years. The Seagulls find themselves two games out of the eight on the back of three straight losses and must turn things around quickly if they are to be hope to be part of the finals action. When the sides met in round six, it was Manly a race to a 24 points to four halftime lead before taking the foot off the gas in the second half and hanging on to win 26 points to 18. And with that, here are the two teams. The Titans uh, skipper Tino Fasamalawe is out due to the impending birth of his second child. Congratulations to the family. Which means Jared Wallace starts at prop after initially being named in the reserves. The Titans have other uh, starting thrones for uh, front rower. Moeki Futuaka uh, reverts to the bench with Jamin uh, Jolif starting. Erin Clark returns to the hooker following Aaron Booth's season ending injury, while Tarnay Boyd and AJ Brimson were once again in the halves. Greg Mayhew will come off the interchange bench. For the Seagulls, Kieran Foran is good to go after suffering a hamstring injury in round 21. Josh Alawale uh, will start in the front row in his return from a knee injury. Switching places with Toa Fofoa uh, Sipley, who comes off the be interchange bench. Josh Huster joins the bench at the expense of Ethan Bellmore, uh, Bullymore even, uh, who is listed as a replacement player. Morgan Harper drops out of the squad 24 hours from kickoff, with Brad Parker starting in his place at centre. The game ended with the Seagulls having their wings clipped against the Titans, 44 points to 22. And it was a one-way traffic in the first half as they the Titans ran out 20 points to 12 in the lead by the Hooter. Jermaine Joliffe had scored on the 6th minute before Ruben Garrick equalised. Giorgio Fafita scored on the 21st minute with Brian Kelly scoring on the 31st as response to a Jake Trevojevic try. We go into penalty territory on the 38th minute where Tane Boyd kicked over the first of many successful conversions. His fourth successful conversion of eight during the day. Both former 
and scored straight after half time on the 45th minute. And AJ Brimson also went over on the 54th minute. The lead was extended once again with a rampaging David Fafita run from 60 metres out on the 56th minute. Before Brad Parker and Tola Tua Cola scored on the 69th minute and 60th minute respectively. Before Ball Firma scored on the 79th minute to close out the game. Tane Boyd 8 from 8 while Ruben Garrett kicked eight, uh, sorry, 4 from 4. Things were made harder for the uh, Sea Eagles in the first half after Dylan Walker was simbined on the 20th minute. But it was always going to go one way, this result. And the Titans were the team that got the result. And that's the close of round 22. Let's see how it all looks and the league table. Penrith Panthers are still top of the charts with 6 points clear. 38 points of North Queensland Cowboys, who in turn are joined by Panola Sharks on 32 points. Melbourne Storm are only two points behind and could go above both teams if results go their, their way next time out. The uh, Rabbitohs are in fifth place now on 28 competition points, which coincides with the return of inspirational Latrell Mitchell. Brisbane Broncos win sees them on equal points of the Rabbitohs, but behind on points differential. The same again for the Parramatta Eels, but the Eels could have been above these two teams and on the same points of the Storm if they hadn't gone down to the uh, Rabbitohs. The Roosters are in 8th place, 2 points clear of the Raiders, who have now got a 4 point gap on the Manly Seagulls, who they're playing next as well as the St. George Illawarra Dragons. The, ba uh, the Canterbury Bulldogs, Mel uh, New Zealand Warriors and Newcastle Knights, thanks to the, only the Warriors winning out of those three, are all on competition, 14 competition points. And the Titans win takes them over the top of the Tigers on 10 points due to points differential. The Tigers' loss against the Sharks sees them bottom place and in the wooden spoon position. And that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and share this video worldwide, as well as clicking that notification bell for any updates or new videos that may be coming your way. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comment section below, as the comment section is now open for our business. Uh, the two results today. Gold Coast getting the win over Manly. Is that expected? Oh, just that Titans has finally got their act together. Too late, though. Um, what about uh, the Raiders? Just getting that win over St. George. Could have been a different... Animal. Going with the uh, Dragons just about. Almost getting the uh, points all squared up. Golden point, extra time. Anything could have happened. Huddersfield, locking down three players for 2023. Fantastic. They uh, should continue to be a force for next season too. And finally, Bulldogs fans, you've got your coach, Sir Cameron Serraldo. You think that's a good move? Do you think it's uh, just clutching at straws? Or are you optimistic of the future? Comment section, open, comment. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. But meantime, please stay safe. I wish you all the best. And I'll see you in the next episode.